Anna Karenina collapse. Having met Vronsky, Anna for the first time had ever experienced addictive sweetness of forbidden love. And she couldn't give it up. She wanted to relish Vronsky as a lover, not as a husband. She jealously followed his feelings to her not to let them fade. She wanted his passion to be always at its peak. She was always provoking quarrels, blaming Vronsky that she had sacrificed everything for him, that no one understood her sufferings. She wished she had died, and so on. Vronsky would prove his love for her. Such quarrels would end with passionate reconciliation, and Anna would quiet down for a while. At that time, she started getting addicted to morphine and opium. A discriminating reader can recognize not only her addiction to these dangerous drugs, but also to such narcotic type of relationships. Vronsky had fallen in love with Anna not only for her beauty, but for her serenity and affection for people. But she had lost those qualities except beauty. But her beauty was not enough for him now. Actually, this novel is not about bad society or bad men. This novel is about moral degradation of one person, Anna Karina. Her moral degradation wasn't caused by her infidelity. Society could have accepted her if she'd married Bronsky and lived with him in his village. But Anna was too envy and selfish for such a peaceful and ordinary life. She wanted to shine at balls in society, feel admired as she used to do. Even living in the village with Bronsky, she flirted with Bronsky's friends and she felt happy when she realized that they were fascinated by her beauty and charm. She fought. Tolstoy used this word. She fought with Vronsky. She was always reproaching him. You have more freedom than I do. You have more opportunities than I do, etc. Despite the fact that Vronsky tried to avoid female companies, not to induce Anna's jealousy, and her jealousy became pathological. She had been waiting for a tragical outcome since the day of the meeting with Vronsky. She always looked at things too tragically, as Betsy Tverskaya said. And her behavior was often destructive. She ruined herself. Since the first meeting with Vronsky, Anna took the role of a victim in this situation. She didn't take charge of her life. She convinced herself and others that she could do nothing. Her action could affect nothing. In such a manner, she freed herself of the responsibility for her life. She deliberately didn't want to make a choice as this permanent decision would demand taking responsibility for some consequences. She thought it was better to wait for something to be decided naturally. Anna became very aggressive and she directed that aggression towards Vronsky, Karenin, society, herself. She also felt pity for herself perhaps due to the drugs that she took. They caused psychosis in Anna, and she couldn't perceive reality adequately. She had a fixed idea that Vronsky had fallen out of love with her, and he was going to leave her. There was another obsessed idea in her mind, that Vronsky had to be punished by her suicide, and after that, he would love her again. She didn't think of the fact that if she did, if she died, she wouldn't be able to enjoy his love. 
revived. Her logical thinking was depressed. But in this depression, in this depressed and obsessed state, she told herself the truth. My love grows more and more passionate and demanding, and his dwindles and dwindles, and that is why we are drifting apart. But Anna didn't understand that that was his passion which was dwindling down, but not his love. Vronsky wanted to develop in everything involving his love for Anna. But she wanted to stand still, to fix that passion at its highest point. Unfortunately, Anna's evil subpersonality that she had told her husband about won her. At the last moments of her life, she was looking at everything and everyone through the prism of pride and despair. Aren't we all flung into the world only to hate each other and therefore to torment ourselves and others? She threw herself in front of a train and died. She achieved her goal. She inflicted on Vronsky a totally useless but ineradicable remorse. Vronsky wooed death. He went to Serbian war. And someone who woos death, he will find it.